Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and there's more app updates to talk about this week. And while I don't typically cover these every single week, I thought there was enough to talk about this time around. And the first thing has to do with maps. Apple is actually now focusing on improving Apple maps in the UK. The UK is probably somewhere you don't see Apple maps used a whole lot. And in a statement to iMore, Apple is going to work on the project for eight months to collect data and imagery, and then improve the overall experience in the UK. Now it's good enough in the USA that I actually prefer it many times when I'm driving, it has better visuals, better audio. It sort of goes in and out with music that's playing a little bit better and it's just a nicer experience. However, I know many people around the world don't use it yet and it's great to see them sort of focusing on an area to get it right. Hopefully it will be something that's just as good, good as Google Maps everywhere around the world very soon. Apple's music app has been updated this past week and while we knew about some of it, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we now have Replay 2024. This showed up a little bit earlier for some people, then Apple took it away. Now it's back. So we have replay 2024. We can go in, see all of our different music. And we also have new features as far as seeing our music that we view monthly. So that's something that they now introduced, but unfortunately it doesn't show up for everyone every time and is based on a web page, not really directly right within the app itself. So it's probably going to be less obvious for many people, but you'll still have replay 2024. So your top songs by the year, the monthly replay is really nice. But again, that requires you going to a web page, not directly within the app. So hopefully they'll update that very soon and we'll be able to just see everything right here. Now, Apple is also working on new features to help import different playlists from other apps, such as Spotify directly into Apple music. It's not available yet, but if you're a Spotify user and wanted to bring all those things over and it was too much of a pain, it looks like they're going to make it a little bit easier to do in the future. Now, Apple has had a support app for quite some time, but it looks like Apple's really working to make it even better. This time around, Apple Care Support is working on actually using new generative AI features to help advisors give better support. So maybe you had a question about how to do something with your iPhone, maybe you're chatting directly here, they can now use AI that will help you out as far as what to do. Now, this could come into play with iOS 18 and future updates, but it looks like something they're testing out right now. How it's being implemented and used, we don't really know, but we do know that Apple's actually using it right now. Now, Spark Email has been around for some time, and they're using AI now in a recent announcement. They actually announced a new feature called My Writing Style. It actually drafts with AI and helps you email in your unique voice, or not really your spoken voice, but actually the way you type. So they've had AI integrated before, but now it can learn more about you and actually sort of sound like you as you're typing. So we're seeing more and more AI integrated and along the same lines as Spark, Google Chrome is doing something similar. So if you use Google Chrome on your iPhone or Mac or Windows PC, they're actually having a new feature called Help Me Write. So if we go in here, it helps you write short form reviews and things like that. And you can see here the different requirements. So you can turn on the experimental AI feature and then it will help you suggest what to write. Maybe you're writing a review and it will help suggest exactly what you may want to write based on how you're speaking. So that's something that we're seeing more and more of with chat GPT. And I'm sure we'll see much, much more of that maybe with numbers and keynote and pages and things like that with iOS 18. And while PlayStation is not an app, they are adding a feature that you can use your iPhone for. They're finally adding pass keys as a login option. So if you're using pass keys on your iPhone, that will now integrate with PlayStation when you're signing in. It's a much easier way to do that. So the first time you use pass keys, you just log right in. Of course, there is an app for it. And if you're logging in, you'll be able to use it there as well. Now, if you use TikTok, they're actually being investigated in Europe for failing to protect children and violating the Digital Services Act. This is actually something that will be under investigation for some time. All of the details are not necessarily available and you can see the story on nine to five Mac. I'll post it in the description if you want to check it out, but basically they're being looked into all over the world for many different reasons, whether or not anything comes of that, we don't really know, but it looks like it's something that may affect TikTok in the long run. Also, if you use Reddit, which many people do, I actually haven't used it in a little while on here, but Reddit actually made a deal to sell content on their site to an AI company, which will gain them about $60 million every year, according to Bloomberg. Today, we learned that Google is the company Reddit will sell that information to. So it looks like they're going to get that information from Reddit and then give it to Google and help learn more, maybe for AI and other things as well. 
As more and more people use threads, threads actually has some updates today as well. Now I'm not seeing all of them, but if we go in and maybe start a new thread, some people are seeing a new option for quick access to the camera itself. There's also a new draft option some are seeing. So this is a new thread. And if you're typing, sometimes you want to stop continue a little bit later, you'll have a new draft option. However, I don't actually have that currently, but some people are already seeing that update. So let me know if you have it in the comments below. However, there was a big update to WhatsApp recently as far as text formatting goes. So if you have WhatsApp and you want to format the text, there's some new options for that. Now there's multiple sites that actually show you how to use this. Mac rumors actually posted this, the verge nine to five Mac, and they updated it this past Wednesday. So you can now use bulleted and numbered lists, block quotes and inline code to communicate more effectively. So there's some examples here where you can start a new line with a dash and then a symbol followed by a space. You can start a new line with one or two digits followed by a period and then a space for a numbered list and much more. I'll link this in the description if you want to use these, if you weren't aware of it. And let me know if you use any of these inline text codes or text formatting options in the comments below. Now, if you're using the signal app and maybe you haven't been wanting to use it just because it uses your phone number, you can now use a username in place of a phone number so that you can keep your number private. So that's available now in signal. Now, Apple released a new sports app. I went over it in a different video the other day, but there's an all new free sports app that maybe sort of hints at what iOS 18 design could be, but also is lacking a lot of features. So if you go into it, some of the things look pretty nice with the way it expands and more, but it is lacking a lot of things, a lot of basic teams that you might want to follow, such as maybe NFL that will probably be next season. We don't have things such as F1 and much more. So hopefully this will be updated, but it seems very bare bones at this time. Also to go along with this, if you use TV plus within TV plus MLS soccer will once again be available for 2024. So if you want to watch that here, you may not be able to get it free through T-Mobile this year, but they're actually teasing the playoffs and actually a new vision pro video for that. That's immersive. So if you want to watch soccer in maybe vision pro and immersive video, I'll definitely check it out as it's something I want to see what it looks like, but that should be available if you have a vision pro this year. Now we've seen some search ads within the app store for a little while now, and it's rolling out to more places. So maybe you're looking for a different app. Sometimes you'll see a little ad at the top and those are rolling out in more places. While this isn't really anything exciting, it's rolling out in Latin America with support in Brazil, Bolivia, Costa Rica, the Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Panama, and Paraguay. So you'll start seeing those in those different countries where different app developers can advertise their app. So we'll see more and more of that very soon. A recent update to the app Strava, where you can run, bike, or hike and track all of that actually has a new update that allows you to track a dog with a smart dog collar from Fi. So that can now connect to Strava and then you can see all of your dog's activity as well if you want to do that. That's one of the latest updates and is available now if you have that collar. Now, one of my favorite apps is Photomator and Pixelmator Pro, and they both got some updates this week. If we go into the app library here and we go to Photomator, there's some major updates. It says what's new in Photomator. We can now edit size optimizations. We also have file browser improvements. So it says when working in files, easily browse photos using a film strip and choose to save edits as a separate file without modifying the originals. So it has non-destructive editing. So I think this is great that they keep updating it and they've brought similar similar things to Pixelmator Pro with a new file browser and better support for Adobe Illustrator files. Now I use the Pixelmator Pro app typically to make all of my thumbnails and Photomator is similar to this on iPad. Also, if you've ever heard of Crossover Mac, that got an update this past week and it now supports many more games. It also supports 32-bit apps as well. So you can see the latest update here. We'll see the blog post and they actually support different things with wine nine. I've used this in the past to play different apps and in games on my Mac. And if we scroll down, you can see some new supported apps such as planet zoo, the binding of Isaac rebirth, age of empires, three definitive edition and 1800 and more. So they've got improvements on Linux as well. And you can check this out if you haven't already, maybe there's some apps you want to try out that I just listed. You'll be able to play those as long as you have a supported device that's fast enough. And finally, one of my favorite new browser companies that seems very innovative is arc search arc search just recently was updated again and you can see the recent updates from one day ago they've got incognito mode where it says 
browse privately by tapping the eyes icon in the search bar. We also have pinch to summarize web pages. So zoom out, pinch together with two fingers on a page and generate a summary. Also improvements to the browse for me pages. So if we go into this, I'll go to a web page and just like the one I mentioned before, if I pinch out here, it says summarizing for you. It just summarized it. it says availability, functionality, future plans, generative AI, and it has some really nice haptic feedback as well. So that's something that's available now and they keep doing some pretty amazing things. And I'm using this web browser more and more. And so that's everything this past week, as far as all the updates, some really good ones, especially that last one I mentioned and much more. If there's any other apps, or maybe you want me to cover separate games, let me know in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.